Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. Today we're going to talk about Virus, or as Jamie Lee Curtis calls it, her worst movie. Is that true? Let's find out today on Talking About Tapes. Tapes with talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. Oh my God, Captain Boomies is back. Hello. Ahoy, hoy. So good to be here. <laughs> uh, what did I do in the page? Arg. <laughs> it's my nautical thing. You're and so we're here with Casey. Yo ho, all you, hands. You're so you singing so. sea shanties. Cheers. Yes. What do we do with a drunken sailor? What a good do one. I only know that from Assassin's Creed Four. But anyway, virus. God, everyone loves virus. It's everyone's favorite movie. We've all seen it a million times, right? Mm. Nope. You guys didn't even know it existed, did you? No. <laughs> nope. No idea. Didn't know why we were reviewing it. Because it's on the ocean. And <laughs> I I remembered that uh, years ago, and I feel bad because I can't find his name. A fan mailed me the original comic book run of oh, Virus, no. the four-issue comic book run. Uh, and I've been meaning to review this movie for forever. Uh, I've actually just really wanted to rewatch it again because I'm like, did I like that movie? I, I, I always think about it. It's been on the set for years. I mean, not now because I have it here. And I look at it all the time, like, I should probably watch Virus, and then I never do. Uh, but I was like, you know what? It's on the ocean. Captain Boomies might like that. She might have a lot to say about it. I read some facts about the film, and I'm like, I wonder if she'll bring some of this up. Uh. And it's got, like, one of the most famous final girls of all time, yes. Jamie Lee Curtis. final girl. Spoilers. And I was like, let me bring Casey on, because the <laughs> ultimate final girl calls this her worst film ever. And I want to know if that's true. Uh, but yes, I saw this movie when it came out on video and it actually might be this literal V videotape. Cause this is from Brantwood video in Maryland <gasps> and I'm doxing them because they've been closed for like 20 something years. Oh. Uh, yeah. My grandfather, when that store closed, he just bought like all their, like a lot of these are Brantwood videos. <laughs> so I popped this in the other day. I'm like, Oh shit, this might be the literal copy I watched in 1999 or 1998 or whatever. That's so special. Uh, yeah, <sighs> this movie has a weird backstory. So the writer, Chuck Farrer, he pitched this to Universal as a uh, movie and they went, no thanks. Mm. Uh, he actually was a, um, let me see here. I think he was a Navy SEAL and he wrote the movie Navy SEALs, which is appropriate enough. <laughs> he eventually went to Dark Horse Comics and he wrote it as oh. a comic book. He also did a sequel to The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing. He did a comic book run of that. For Dark Horse. Dark Horse used to do all the movie yeah. comics, like uh, Star Wars, Alien, Predator. Uh, and apparently this comic book run was only four issues. Apparently it sold really well. Wow. It did really, really well. It was like 1992, 1993. And then eventually he went back and they were like, yeah, we'll make a movie. It took a while to make the movie. Uh, they got Gail Ann Hurd to produce it this. Universal. Huh? It is Universal. It is Universal. Wow. Good for him. So... Gail Ann Hurd uh, produced this, who was one of James Cameron's many ex-wives. Get out. Uh, the one who helped him produce, like, Aliens and oh Terminator. Uh, yeah, and they got John Bruno to direct this. Um, he was a big visual effects guy for James Cameron. Uh, and he actually directed the Terminator 3D, the battle across time, the, the ride. The show? Huh? Yeah, the show. Amazing. He, he directed the show. The show's great. Which, by the way, I have it in the case. A fan sent me. I didn't know they made toys specifically for that attraction. I love that. Yeah. Wow, I'm learning so much see. right now. <laughs> yeah. So John Bruno, he's like a big like effects guy. He won an award for something, and I forgot to write it down like a fucking idiot. Uh, but he won like effects. He worked on a lot of James Cameron's biggest films. So you'd think the effects in this would be better um, well, you know it's so funny because yeah. while i was watching it i was like this should have been a ride at universal it really should <laughs> and there were so many great moments that could have been oh, um yeah. oh i have it here chuck also wrote uh sudden impact dark man which we reviewed on this film and a movie i got to review at some point barbed wire starring pamela anderson oh yeah oh, also wow. based off a comic book i don't know if he wrote the comic oh. um and the other writer you're painting a picture for me. Yes. Oh, the I other know. writer was a co-writer, I think, on Species, which this movie kind of takes some uh, notes from. You ever see Species? Heard of it. Could see I the cover so. in my it's head. It's got like an egg thing. Yeah. yeah. 
Species. It was the sexy alien. Oh. oh. She's like, H.R. Giger did the uh, the design for the alien creature, but it's like uh, aliens sent a communication to Earth to make a new organism, and it's a horny chick. And then she, <gasps> yes. she, she sleeps with a bunch of dudes in L.A., yes. and eventually, spoiler, she settles on Alfred Molina, of all people, and then they, she makes a little alien baby. And then they did Species 2 oh, a few cool. years later. Sounds like a We'll talk about episode. Species another day. Yeah. Um, Fun. But yes, uh, this film, the reason I bring up uh, Species and this is because this is like when, this is like the height of X-Files and stuff. Okay. And people were real into SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Like in like real a, life? Yes, in okay. real life. Um and people were like, where it was like they were like transmitting stuff into space and they were mm. pulling in radio signals from space to see if there was intelligent life out there. We're still doing that. We're still doing it. It's been going on for many, many decades. And people are be, people are starting to be like, hey, can we just cut the funding for this? You never find anything. So the, the theory is like, is the world, is the universe just not as populated as we thought it was? Or is it like they're just not using radio waves? Mm. But anyway, that leads us to this film, Virus. Starts off on a Russian space station communicating with a Russian vessel. Now, I'm not going to dip into the comic too much because I plan to review it with Mint Salad and Riley on their new show for canon's sake. Cool. Uh, but I will say in the comic, it is a Chinese vessel and a Chinese station and they changed it for this one. Oh. <laughs> I will say the comic, it feels like a rough draft of a script. Good. It really does. Like it's the movie, the setup is very similar to this. And then the movie goes on two different directions. Like, um, the characters in the comics are just kind of just figuring stuff out randomly. They're like, Oh yeah, they must be evil robots. And that's why this movie introduces that character that tells them because it's like, why would they figure that out? Are all of the comics, the one movie? Yes. Like, all, okay. Cool. Yeah. That it's only so a four cool issue. Thing. It's not like an on running series. Gotcha. It's like only four issues. Uh, so yeah, Russian space station. Uh, they're mm -hmm. communicating with the ship. Uh, I like that they're playing chess with each other. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Fun fact about, about the ship. It was a real ship. Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently, like, it had been, like, totally decayed or whatever. Like, it just wasn't Yeah, she held. was a derelict being kept in one of the... So the U.S. has a bunch of slips in the, Norfolk, Virginia, where they put boats that they're just going to let rot until they need to pull things off of it for parts. Yeah. So that's where this boat came from. So apparently they just painted the one side and they just never filmed the other side of the boat. They're like, well, we'll just paint the one side. Why not? Isn't there a graveyard term for ships? Yeah, ship graveyard. Ship yeah. graveyard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She's actually now at the bottom of uh, somewhere in the Keys. That's know. actually, I knew this boat, which is crazy. Oh, back Get out of uh, here. Wait, there, she's in the Florida Keys? She's in the Florida Keys. She's a Can she's we get scuba reef. suits and go see you it? Absolutely can, and they left the Russian name board on it. Can we? Which is why people get really confused when they go, when they dive on that wreck, because it's got a Russian name on it, <laughs> but it's not a Russian vessel. <laughs> <laughs> just wow, I love thing. it. We yeah. should have filmed there. I, yeah. <laughs> well, now I now I want to get a waterproof case and I want to go down there and take a selfie. With the, with the That's thing. incredible. <laughs> now you know. And send it to Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Also, the way, no, there were no subtitles for this, so I have no idea what they're talking about. The they, yeah, they, they were like very intermittent about the subtitles. Yeah, they, yeah like, the subtitles were hit or miss. Yeah. <laughs> What? Which, by the way, we all watched the VHS rip. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> this happens a lot on the show, and it drives me fucking nuts. There are some movies that are just always streaming. And I feel like I always see this on Tubi or HBO Max or something. And then, sure enough, when it's time to actually review the goddamn thing, it's just gone from every single service ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... I'm like, all right, well, I don't really want to charge them to watch Virus. <laughs> we just rip the VHS <laughs> tape. Even cooler. <laughs> it's very nice of you. Thank you for saving me yeah. four dollars or whatever. Yeah, so we're gonna be critical of the effects. Maybe they look good in like Blu-ray quality, but we're looking at VHS quality. And <laughs> anyway, so when they're in the space station, there's just a big electrical storm that That's just scary. happens to be around. They they just hang out up there. Uh and it runs into the space station, infects all of their stuff, and then they send a signal down to the boat, and I guess that shoots the sentient electricity alien down into the boat and it takes over there. I don't think we ever visit the space station again, by no. the way. Yeah, what happens to it? Does it just... 
I assume, fall apart in space or what did it well there's the nothing up there to make robots so i assume they all just died mm. I assume they all just blew up and died then we get to see a tugboat that's in some rough water uh, uh, give me a second give me a second i think i know what you're gonna say about the tugboat uh jamie lee curtis aka kit tries to tell donald sutherland aka captain everton how screwed they are uh and sutherland just gets annoyed and then they got late '90s leading man Daniel Baldwin of all people mm-hmm. playing. <laughs> I'm sorry, you. Big... It was so exciting. I was like, "Oh my god, that's a Baldwin!" <laughs> he's, like, he's not the one from the Kiefer Sutherland movie. What one were they in together? Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. They remade it. Oh, uh, panic! So many panic. One. There's so many Sutherlands in. Uh... Oh my gosh. So... Oh wait. They remade it. Flatliners. Yes, that's not him. Was Daniel that Baldwin? Baldwin? In... I have no idea. I think it was Daniel. He's the cute one. We gotta, I mean, we got to look this up. Or it's up. Billy. Hold on. Hold it's on. Billy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was Billy Baldwin. Billy. You got the wrong I one. I don't know a Daniel. I didn't know there was a Daniel. I thought Adam Baldwin was related to them for the longest time. He's not even related to them. Could have been. He's the brother who didn't shoot someone. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Steve Baker he tries to tell the captain, like, hey, man, you got to cut the barge. That thing is going to sink and take it with us. And the captain is like, no. I've leveraged everything I own against it. And it's not insured. The first problem I had. Yes, please go into this. Was Donald Sutherland's accent. What the hell was that? I think he was just trying whatever, <laughs> to yeah, be I honest. Like I think he was just having fun. Okay. My second problem was... That is not an ocean-going tug, number one. That's what I read. Number two, that is, that is not an ocean-going barge. And if they were in the Pacific Ocean, they would have a much longer tow line. Like, far enough that in that kind of weather, you probably wouldn't even be able to see the barge, and you'd feel no effects from it. But all of those things combined, there's no way those two vessels would be in the situation they were in. Not a chance. And they would have been in they would have been in trouble way earlier <laughs> like, <laughs> like they would have been like maybe 12 miles from land <laughs> before yeah. they were like oh damn <laughs> we got problems yeah uh, but um yeah the captain's motivation i'm sorry yeah. and the insurance thing <laughs> yeah okay it's the insurance sure. thing makes me absolutely crazy because one there's no way that he could have made enough money to even have command of that tugboat mm-hmm. in order to and not have the insurance for the tugboat to move cargo so and then no port in the world will let you enter without insurance yeah there is no port in the world that'll let you do that so that is <laughs> yeah totally <misled. laughs> yeah um Hold, it... can I, you have an eyelash kind of yeah. <laughs> it Thank you. I appreciate it. it. Yes, you're welcome. Save the day. (laughs) High five. Um, Yeah, the captain in the movie is very different than the one in the comic. The one in the comic, apparently, like, Hmm. they have some kind of company and his dad owns the company. So he wants to bring it in to, like, impress his dad. The captain is, like, in the comic, he, like, turns into a robot, like, right away. And I think they kill him right away. Like, Like, again... The comic is very much a rough draft of what they wanted to do. Well, and they the, didn't have Donald Sutherland. <laughs> yeah, once you but. get Donald Sutherland, you're like, oh, no, we got to keep this guy around a little bit. And $300 million. Wait, what? That's how much he promised them. Oh, yeah. That, sorry, yeah. sorry. I thought you, for oh, a minute, I thought yet? you said the movie yeah. cost $300 I'm million. Dollars. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> no, yes, that that's that's a little later. That's okay. a little later. Not yet. So, yeah, the barge and its cargo sink. Because they're in a typhoon. Yes, or a they're hurricane. They're in a typhoon or, yeah. in a coastwise barge. <laughs> Yes. Of course it's going to have a problem. But don't worry, because Jamie Lee Curtis is like, we could go to the eye of the storm and everything will be calm. Because it's, I don't know why you're shaking your head. I saw that Simpsons episode. I know that everything is calm in the eye of a hurricane or a storm. Okay, look, I've never been in the eye of a hurricane. I I probably cannot speak that <laughs> intelligently about it, except that, no, sea states move even when there is no wind. So <laughs> you're not going to have flat calm. It's still going to be pretty gnarly. Yeah, it literally, like, they go in the eyes of like, the hurricane is just around them and like, a, a mad pool. shot. And it's, like, perfectly still. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know if it'd be that still. But again, we've never been in the I've eye never of a hurricane. Been, so. Now, if you want to be in the eye of a tornado, it's really easy. 
you just get like a metal pipe and you get some belts and you tie yourself to it because it worked in Twister and they were totally fine. <laughs> Twister is apparently getting a sequel this year. I know. What? That's so weird. I mean, they have to call it Twisters, right? It's Ooh, that's perfect. It's going to be real annoying if and they don't. And that was a ride. Huh? That was a ride at that Universal. That was, and they got rid of it. It, it. You know, I got to go to Universal twice this year after, like, over a decade of not being there. And I get, like, a little sad because I'm like, mm. oh, all the rides I liked are now gone. Mm. Like, But I get it. Like, Terminator and Twister were big for me as good. But, like, there's newer movies. Like, I get why. And the Jason Bourne Stuntacular is actually pretty good. As much as I miss the Terminator uh, one, I do like the Jason Bourne one, but... But it's 2024. Virus. <laughs> yeah, we gotta bring virus back. Bring virus in there. <laughs> they have the whole setup still. Can they do a Halloween Horror Nights where one of the maze is just flop movies that they made? <laughs> All the monsters are just like, remember, the, you might recall these monsters from this movie you forgot about. <laughs> they call the captain and he's just ready to shoot himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Uh, and they're like, hey, we found a boat. Kip finds a boat. Wait, or did, ship. Does, do, does he explain the picture that he's looking at at all? No, he never does. He looks at, I don't, I thought it was a picture of himself for a second, yeah, like when he was young. It's all sepia toned and like yeah. a mm -hmm. young man. I'm like, is he gay? Like, what, <laughs> is this his lover back on shore? <laughs> is this like going to be a really intense story about getting back to him? And like the redemption of. <laughs> no, we never learn enough about him for like why he's such an asshole. <laughs> Uh, I just like the idea of them knocking on the thing and he's just like, ah, yeah, okay, I'll be there. Yeah, one second. One second. I would just assume he's masturbating. <laughs> that's, if I, were, I tell my crew I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if this is real. They, they wander across the ship and Jamie Lee Curtis is like, hold up. Let me get my big book of Russian vessels that have all the information. Are those That's real? That's actually 100% a real thing. That is a real yeah. thing. Okay. I, you know what? I thought like, it would be. Large cargo ships, used to, they used to print a book of, um, annually of the larger vessels that were out and about doing things, and especially in different regions. Okay. So that was not an, an unheard of document. Okay. How cool. Yeah. Uh, it was of no use to it's, them. It's no yeah. use anymore because now we have AIS, yeah. which is an automatic identification system. So you just click on your computer <laughs> and it goes, it's this boat. Here's a picture of it. Here's what they're carrying. Here's where they're going. Here's how fast they're going there. It's great. Did you know that? Did you know that? <laughs> By the way, uh, so again, I, I don't know much about ships, but this uh, research vessel did everything apparently. It's communicating with spaceships but also it has labs and also it has just a machine factory that makes robots i'm like why would you need that on a boat i don't understand <laughs> like that feels like a weird it feels like it's on the boat so they could have an excuse to have robots running around to be honest <laughs> by the way i gotta i only read the comics like once I uh i forget if they even had like a robot factory i think the Electro thing just made them. So I think the robot factory was just to explain, like, oh yeah, people are going to be wondering how fucking robots, like, it's just already mm. there. Jamie Lee Curtis, her character, and I get the source material, her character's like nothing. What is she doing in this movie? So she's the navigator. No, no, I know, th no, no, I know right. that. But, but I'm just. <laughs> you're saying the actress. Right? Yeah, the actress, because, like, she. By the way, she, like, really hates us. She tried to get the director fired and shit, but, like, how did she even sign on to this because this is right after Halloween H2O so everyone's like real high on her she was a badass in this in that and then in this she's just kind of like a well she starts money. off as a badass right she's pushing back against the captain yeah and giving you know uh, kind of like she's not really doing as much as she and... should Daniel Baldwin's doing more of that than her true are they together in this movie no mm -hmm. okay they're not a couple no yeah, I just don't know why she's in this. She looks miserable in every shot, including, including that. Yeah, what? She, she does. Yeah. Well, if I had read the script, I'd have been like, yeah, <laughs> I'm totally going to be on this movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really liked it. I had a lot of fun. They should remake it. I'll talk about yeah, that toward okay. the end. Um, I want to hear more about why she doesn't like it, though. I'll have to look up interviews. Uh, she, I, I mean, I, I'll i tell you why I don't like it. <laughs> well, let's say that. <laughs> It's just, it's just weird when I'm watching this. I'm like, this feels like a character. Like, this doesn't feel like a part you would put Jamie Lee Curtis in at that time. And she is like a younger girl in the comics. And I'm just like, oh, they must have given her a shit ton of money. Because mm -hmm. 
you could have put like an up and comer in this, like whoever was big at the time. Like, I don't know. Jennifer Love Hewitt. I don't know. It was someone like that where I would have made more sense. I'm trying to think who was big in 1999. He'd be a great casting director, Tony. <laughs> Jennifer Love Hewitt and everything, apparently. <laughs> a big Jennifer Love Hewitt uh, craze, all right? Yeah. So yeah, the captain's like, I got a great idea. Let's bring the ship in. And they're like, they're like, wait, the Russians are going to be looking for this. And it's like, well, it's maritime law. We could just take it for ourselves and bring it to America and they'll... Give us all the money and you're shaking your head. Is none of this true? Uh, okay, so yes, there is this concept of salvage rights. Yeah. Uh, and that is absolutely a thing, but it does not apply to military vessels. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I feel it does like... not apply. I feel like military vessels... Nope. They nope. might not like nope. that. <laughs> absolutely No exceptions. Uh, but salvage rights are a thing. They're just applying it wrong. Oh, okay. I wish there was a character like you on the ship going, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, is this on the black market? Because if you're trying to do this legally, you're fucked. I will appreciate the one actor who's in this. I forgot to write his name down. I like that he had the face tattoos. Uh, oh, yeah. He is, um, he, I got excited. I thought he was Taika Waititi when I heard his voice at first. <laughs> no. No. He is a very famous actor, but he's yeah. also like Taika. He is a Maori, yeah. uh, which is like the New Zealand natives. I, I like that was like a... Because there's not a lot of great characters in this. I know, Casey, they're all your favorite character. No, uh, so I like that they added that as like just a little bit of a character trait. I'm like, oh, okay. That was kind of cool. Yeah. And then he was real... Uh, stoic when he's yeah Hiko problems. I think his name Hiko. is he was it's hot. a Samoan guy in the comic they switched it out for the movie okay Afa I think his name was in the comic he he doesn't make it anyway um how culturally sensitive of you <laughs> <laughs> look at him go <laughs> so the crew is on board with this idea okay. except for Kit Jamie the Curtis because she's the smart she's basically Ripley in this mm -hmm. come on Foster it's easy money. There's no such thing as easy money, Squeaky. I take that as a yes, Foster. That's another thing. Her character, like, it's Jamie Lee Curtis. We know her as one character, and she's kind of ripping off Ripley. It feels weird. Yeah. It really, <sighs> this one reminded me a lot of AVP, though. It does feel more like, it's funny, it feels less like aliens, more like alien versus predator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially toward the end, which we'll get to that part, because it kind of has we the same shall. ending. I'm sorry, is, is your knowledge of Alien versus Predator lacking? <laughs> does it take place on a boat? <laughs> Part of it does. Oh. Part of it does to get to Antarctica. It does. And we did all commentaries. We did a commentary track for it so you can watch the movie <laughs> and listen to me and Casey complain about it. I'll have to watch that. All the machines and engines are destroyed on the boat. And by destroyed, I mean apparently later on you can just like plug a thing and it all works. <laughs> Squeaky, the Cuban guy. Uh, who's also, he's the guy doing the illegal parasail tour in the beginning of Jurassic Park 3, who gets eaten. Oh. You know, that memorable character. He gets killed off screen by something. Um, he, uh, he managed to turn the ship back on. And then, look, I know movies for, like, monsters, they use uh, sound effects from animals. But nothing is more annoying than when they use a pig sound effect for an animal. I can't. Is that what that was? Yeah, the ree! Yeah, that's a sound of pigs like squealing wow. and screaming. Thank you for explaining that to me. I appreciate it. It's not the only movie that does it, by the way. There's a lot of movies that do. What's the one? Uh, Squirm. It's a 70s or 80s movie about killer or No, it's definitely 70s because Stallone said he really wanted to be in the movie. He didn't get to be in it. It's about killer slugs. Is Ew. it too much to ask why you put yourself through this? It was a Mystery <laughs> Science Theater episode. Okay. That one, so that one gets an exception. Uh, but every time they do a close-up on the slugs or the snails, they had pig screaming sound effects. And I don't know what it is, but like pig screaming, it's it's one of those sounds that just gets under your skin. You're like, oh my God, stop it. And this yeah. movie. Every time there's a fucking robot powering up, it's doing the wee. I'm like, oh god, stop it! I did not it. connect that. Oh god! I now when that. I watch it again, <laughs> yeah, I won't watch. be able to unhear it. Because you're gonna watch as many times as your new favorite movie. New favorite. You're gonna be the biggest virus fan in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna look up uh, Chuck Farr. You're gonna get him to sign their comics. That's so cool. <laughs> that is really cool. That's such a pretty cover. And again, shout out to the fan who sent yes. me this stuff. I really, I like. A while back, I was like, hey, please message me if you sent this. I want to give you a shout out. And I just Aww. 
forgot. I checked the mailbag. I think his name was John or something, but I never got a last name. Anyway, if it's you, please say hi. Uh, so yeah, they're all turning themselves on. The robot factory just turns on and starts making robots. That was cool. That, that was, was cool. kind of cool. That I was like kind of cool. It comes to life. And then the ship magically just, well, not magically, the, the AI on the ship is taking over and it drops the anchor onto the tugboat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, you're t- okay. What, what was wrong with this scene? Um, well, there is a bunch. You of wouldn't just put your tugboat right underneath the anchor. That's uh, not a place well, you would put it. No, they did justify that. They said have him come around to the so- to the other side, mm-hmm. so he it's a boat that's adrift. He could go either way, mm-hmm. and going around the front would actually make a decent amount of sense because who knows what the propulsion system off the back looks like. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you'd go around the front and you'd hip toe onto it. Uh, and start prepping to get your lines run from the bow through those hawsers okay. to the tugboat okay. so that they could start towing it. So, but the anchor coming on and that windlass going, like, I was so afraid watching that actor anywhere near that thing because they did let it spool. Yeah. And that is such a dangerous place to be. And then I was thinking, oh my God, the camera is right there too. <laughs> and there's probably a bunch of crew like standing near that thing. Whoa. Like you're supposed to be so far away from that equipment when it's in operation. Yeah. It scared the heck out of me. <laughs> like that was the scariest part of the movie for me. The scariest part, not not any of the scenes with the robots or the cyborgs. <laughs> you're like that one part. Yeah, the <laughs> real life it. aspect. <laughs> that was the scariest. Wow. I mean, I was scared earlier. When uh, they were like, where are we going to go? And then the woman suggested and they listened to her. I'm like, oh, no, I've been down that road before. (laughs) Yeah, it's a good plan. (laughs) That was the the scariest part of Blair Witch Project where they're like, oh, the woman knows where we're going. I'm like, no, 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 I've I've, I've fallen fallen into that trap before. Well, hence final girl in this movie. (laughs) I'll always steer you wrong, Tony. (laughs) I'm sure you're great. You're one of the good ones. You're one of the good... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, I can navigate. <laughs> their tug uh, is destroyed, mm-hmm. completely yeah. destroyed. It's honestly, it was on its last legs anyway. Sure, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I think the one character's name is Woods, the guy who's actually driving the boat. I love that he just leaves the guy to drown. <laughs> Which, by the way, the one guy, uh, Hiko, he's just like, I can't swim. It's like, dude, what are you doing on a boat, man? Uh-huh. Like, you should probably. Is that what he said? I just assumed his leg was too messed up. I think his leg was messed up, but I think he says he can't swim. Maybe he can't swim because his leg was messed up. Okay. But I like, I didn't mind Woods. He was like, I'm going to go get you help. And then he swims away from him. (laughs) I don't know. I'd be that guy 100%. 100% of the movie, I'd be that dude. Yeah. You always frown when I say things like like that. It's like that. Tweet. Never mind. We won't go down that. Okay. No, we we are. We're revisiting uh, this a year later. There was a hero last year, <laughs> a modern day Hercules. We've mentioned this in two episodes, <laughs> and I feel like the internet should have been applauding him and giving him an award. But people like Casey and everyone else. So he may or may not have been on a date with a lady. I'm not sure what the context was. But then these burglars came up. It was like an outdoor restaurant, and they had guns and they were pointing it at people. And they, like, walked past the guy. When he realized that they weren't looking at him, he just got up and left the person. And he just walked away. And I went, what a, what a hero. <laughs> what an absolute genius. For himself? Yeah. Look, if she wasn't if she wasn't smart enough to also get up and walk away. You she, grab she, her hand. No, no, no. That'll slow you down. <laughs> Bullets are fast, Casey. You need to be as fast as you can. Uh, self-preservation is a thing, but, yeah. you know, if you're going to be on film, there is something called STCW, which is your safety standards for any kind of overseas boat travel. And it's supposed to be a standardized set of how you operate in an emergency situation. And it includes things like firefighting and um bathing <laughs> and, like, and a little bit of first aid and some uh, survival at sea stuff. Mm. But one of the things that they basically teach you is whoever has this training is who you should prioritize. So oh, okay. it basically means if you have guests on board that don't know this kind of stuff, prioritize the crew and the people that do 
and then worry about them. So there is this concept of put your mask on first. Uh, yeah, you help just, and that's what I'm doing when I run yes. away from dangerous situations or applaud other people. Just saying, I am wrong. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta find out. I hope we can find out who that guy is. I don't know what country he was in. I think it was somewhere in South America. I'm gonna go visit that dude and be like, "You're a hero." <laughs> Years from now, that woman wouldn't have helped you. You were right to run away. <laughs> okay. Um, take care of yourselves. Kit, Steve, and the captain take uh, the one guy to sick bay, and everyone else goes to the engine room. Meanwhile, little robots start moving around. Where's this go, Rich? Little ones like, like this guy, who I don't think mm. made it into the movie, but he looks really goofy, and I wish he did. He looks like that Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh my god! Ah, real monsters. Yeah. Holy shit! He does. He looks like Ah, <laughs> the guy who held his eye. <laughs> this one made it into the movie. The big flying one. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the thing. If For the podcast uh, listeners, I'm holding up the covers, which are actually really cool. Uh, it has been collected into like a trade paperback with different art. Uh, but they, in the comics, they look like, and this is what they are in the movie, but they don't look quite like this. They're mixed with flesh and metal and they're like bleeding. It looks like. If, like, a Hellraiser mixed with, like, a Terminator, that kind of idea. Okay. Uh, but in the movie, they don't quite look like this. Like, other than a no. few of them, they're just little robots. And a lot of them, like, their faces look like uh, the Sentinels from the Matrix. Those big squid ones. They're just not visually interesting. Which is weird because the comics made them look so cool and interesting. Do you remember Chippy, that movie? Chappy. Chappy. Yes. That's what they look like. Which I actually never saw. I never but, saw it, but I know what he looks like. Yeah. Uh, Not even that good. Yeah, if you're going for horror, you want to see. Because it's right. also supposed to seem like the that thing. That is cool. The movie is very derivative of the thing. It should be flesh mixed with metal. I agree. Well, they kind of. We'll see. <sighs> You'll see. So, I do like when uh, Squeaky says, I'm a friend. I'm Cuban, not American. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah. It's a was, Russian <laughs> boat. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> that is, does make sense, actually. <laughs> You know what? I didn't point that together. I yeah. forgot. I forgot about that whole missile crisis. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I do like. I'm gonna start using that. You know, you know, Royce from ROTC. I look a lot like his Cuban cousin. I can pass for it. Well, hot damn. So yeah, I thought this was gonna be like a cool first kill, and it's not. It's the bug just grabs him. And we see some cables, and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I thought that'd be cooler. Because we already had, like, the off-screen sort of kill in the beginning when, like, the alien first attacked. I thought we'd see, like, some blood or something here, right. but we don't. Uh, so Richie, uh, the one black guy in woods, are walking around the ship, and they just keep going on little side quests to their to the engine room. They're supposed to go to the engine room, and they can't help but keep going into other rooms. They find, like, a million guns. Mm -hmm. I love Richie. Yeah. Including the rocket propelled grenade launcher. I'm like, dude, I wouldn't be using that right now, especially below deck. I really, I like, I wouldn't even want to risk firing that thing off. Oh, yeah. The, I mean, the per, the back percussion of it would probably kill everybody anywhere near it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, like but instead, he's like, hey, Woods, have all of these guns on you, including the rocket launcher. And I think a scene later is like, I have too many guns. And he's like throwing <laughs> them everywhere. You can never be too. Too oh, yeah. thin, too rich, or too well armed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the. Which, by the way, if you're wondering why um, the Russians haven't tried to like find this boat yet, uh, they they don't give you a reason in the actual movie. Um, but in the comics, when it was the Chinese military, like the Chinese actually sent a jet to go sink the ship because uh, they're like, oh shit! Like they figure out what happened. They're like, we gotta go sink it, and like the robots use the signals and they make the rockets go back and blow up the jet. So like, so in the comic, like literally, oh, no cool. one can help them because the robots will just deflect everything. Yeah. This movie doesn't give us a reason. It's more like it reminds me of you ever see Leviathan with yeah. uh, that's also a ripoff of the thing that's underwater. I reviewed it on Movie Dumpster. Um, it reminds me of that one where they were like, the Russians are like, oh shit, we did a secret thing and it fucked up. I hope no one finds it. I think that's what we're meant to believe. They're like, I just hope no one finds that floating death factory we have out there. Did the comic book writer write the script? Yes. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Yes. And he wrote it with the guy who did Species. So mm -hmm. yeah, they, uh, they really reworked it a lot. 
They try to give one reason, and that at some point they say that they're way out of the shipping channels. Uh, Why would we take a job with this guy when he's what? Oh, nah. Oh, uh, is that their way around it? Hmm. I don't think that would it's work. It's a total fabrication. They have like a million satellites on that thing. Like that sh- of, of all the ships on Earth, that would be the one that can communicate with things. Yeah. So yeah, the captain's real excited about this. So. Uh, this cargo thing, this haul that he's going. He's like, hey, what are you going to do with your money? What are you going to do with your money? Uh, and then right away, Russian lady comes out and just tries to machine gun everyone. That was cool. That was pretty cool. He just opens the door and there she is. <laughs> and she is the Russian lady from the beginning. Uh, and I think they eventually knock her out. I like her little gas mask that she has on. And she speaks English this whole time. Yes. Yeah, in the beginning, didn't want to share with us what she was talking about. Yes. Oh, they, they do they make a point to say in this film like why they like they're trying to use the machines but they can't read Russian or whatever. Yeah. They change it at the end. In the book they literally find uh just a book that says Chinese English. <laughs> like that's their way around <laughs> everything. Like, oh, how convenient. There's a Chinese English book here. Like a dictionary they yeah, look literally, up every word. Literally. Oh, I think in this on the computer they just like they're they like switch it. switch it to English cuz that's a thing apparently. I don't know why I have in my notes and then, whoa, crossover between uninvited and virus. <laughs> was there a cat? I don't think there was a Why cat. Why did I write that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay. When she comes out, she's in like a gas mask yeah. kind of thing. Like, there. that's in uninvited. Oh, the guy's in the beginning. Yeah. The scientist in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah. Patreon. <sighs> yeah, go to Patreon to watch her uninvited review. <laughs> what if there was a robot cat that threw up a different robot cat in the- <laughs> Inception. <laughs> That's like too many cooks. <laughs> this is a bit of a letdown. The robot tentacle attacks Woods and Richie. Actually kind of does look like the tentacle that attacks them in the comic. But in the comic, it's literally like a human eye with the veins wrapped around it. But in this, it's just like a camera lens. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why did they? The movie's rated R. I don't know why they toned down the violence that much in this and the gore in this. Mm. Uh, but yeah, like it. At no point do I feel scared yet or even like there's a threat because they kind of just are like, ah, what's that? Ah, get out of here. And, like, that's it. I'm like, yeah. And then the radio is like, yeah, you never believe it. There's like a little robot around here. And they're like, wait, what? There's like a sentient robot that tried to kill. Like, no one is as scared as they probably should be in this film. Okay. So the Russian lady lets them know that they made a mistake turning the power on. And she like tries to run away and she runs into a little room. And then Kit, Jamie Lee Curtis goes in there and tries to communicate with her in this tiny room and this derelict thing. And I was like, oh my God, this is literally Ripley with Newt in Aliens. 300 crew members are gone. What happened? Oh, it's yes, almost ex- it is. It's almost exactly the same setup. They find the survivor. She runs into a little corner yes. and the one tries to be motherly. Although in this movie, I think Jamie Lee Curtis is maybe like, I don't know, five years older than this girl. <laughs> it's just like, I'm like, this is... Literally, like, I, if I was Jamie Lee Curtis, I'd be like, hey, wait, are we just ripping off that movie? Well, this is the first part in the movie where I was like, oh, maybe this is the romantic relationship in the movie. And I got excited. I was in like, 1998? No. Oh, okay. I think it's between Squeaky and Steve. But we'll get <laughs> Squeaky there. and Steve. I, I was really disappointed <laughs> yeah. by that. But at this point, this is the, uh, what's the Russian lady's name? Do we know? Uh, yeah, Na- Nadia. She is pretty much telling us the whole exposition of the movie. Yes. So that's good. And then Helpful. Jamie Lee Curtis, girl power's all gone. She just cuffs her. <laughs> <laughs> like super helpful, but yeah, we don't and trust you. That's when it should have become the movie I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Inappropriate. She was really hot in something I just watched, Trading Places. Yes. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes. Yes. Um, you didn't find her hot in Virus? No. <laughs> No. Because they mentioned, like, don't you think she's hot? And I'm like, she's hotter than Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was all right. Not my, like, uh, 90s Jamie Lee Curtis is all right. I mean, she's mm-hmm. fine. She's, she's attractive. But the, the way they're describing her, it's like, I don't know. She's not like the next big thing, guys. Calm down. Yeah. Then again, well, they've, been, the they've, been at the, they've been in the sea for many, many days. So Yeah. <sighs> Probably a bit ripe. <laughs> when, you, when your options are limited, you know. <laughs> Much like mine on land. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, (laughs) I ended up with my ship's engineer, so I understand. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) Yeah, I, yeah, (laughs) co-worker. I love it. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, I can't hook up with anyone I work with uh, all day long because I work by myself in a base. <laughs> You're just not trying hard enough. <laughs> I guess I'm not. I guess I'm not. <laughs> One day, a random woman will just throw me robbing the house. I'm like, hey, before you, before you steal that uh, Bane action figure, uh, let me tell you my name. Uh, <laughs> or someone maybe will come to, f- to fix something. <laughs> I don't know. I was the thinking Wi-Fi. more like split personalities or something. <laughs> I do. I do love when like repair people. Like when I had the cable guy here over the summer. Like when they come down, I'm like, eh, just just a heads up. It's really stupid down there. I just don't like. like I just want you to like not be. This isn't stupid. What are you talking about? Because they probably go to like people's houses, like their grandmothers and stuff. And they walk down. They're like, "What the hell is this?" You better make sure no one does take things. Sorry, tangent. When I mean, I need to downsize anyway. So look, if you. <laughs> Look, I don't really want the Black Series Jar Jar Binks figure to be stolen, but if you did, like, I probably wouldn't put up that much of a fight to get it back. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, anyway, Virus, they did sell Virus toys. I couldn't find any. Aww. I couldn't find it. I didn't look that hard, but if I ever find... the huh? machines? Yeah, I think of the okay. machines. She's the one who killed the power, by the way. So they, like, the machines are using the power from the ship... But like, so some of them have cords and are plugged in to the mainframe computer, but then others are remote. I'm like, okay, so can they not generate their own electricity? But this is very confusing yeah, to me. Because some of them have batteries later on, and they're able to. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know what the batteries would look like on a ship that no. size at that time. Yeah, they'd be insanely huge. <laughs> they'd be like the size of this desk right here. Okay. Wow. Um, and they would have to, <laughs> they would have needed the generators on a lot yeah. <laughs> like, to be able to power those machines. <laughs> so there must be some kind of magic. Yeah. I just don't know why they need happening. like the computer. I guess the computer is to like signal all of them or something. So they're all tied to the computer, which is why she killed the power. Mm. Mm-hmm. So Richie and Woods, they find the machine factory. Which is weird because, like, there are, like, robots in there. Like, the bug robot, the Mm -hmm. insect one is in there. And, like, they all don't just try to kill those two right away. They're like, oh, sorry, we're building machines right here. Hi, how you doing? And then I like that they turn off the power Hmm. to the machine factory. Well, it must be like the Borg, you know. It is kind of like the Borg. The Borg aren't going to mess with you if you're not messing with them. Star Trek, sorry. Oh, I don't know. The Borg don't attack you unless they think you're actually a threat. So yeah, so do what you want. Gotcha. So do what you want, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's still a thing. I don't watch new Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> the hell was that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just here to be weird. <laughs> don't have sex with the Borg, all right? Data almost did that. Okay. Seven of nine. Yes, yes. No, I Seven of nine starring Jerry Ryan, who was in Dracula 2000, which I reviewed. It was the first movie of this year. <laughs> Go back and watch the Dracula 2000 review. So, yeah, so this is a weird scene. Like, this could be a scary scene because he turns off the machine factory. And again, Baldwin's like, are you still not at the engine room? I don't care about the robot factory. Get to the fucking engine room. My boyfriend Squeaky is there. <laughs> so then they leave, and I do think it's cool that the machine battery turns itself back on. Ooh. I'm like, oh, that's a cool scene. But then, like, Richie, like, peeks back and looks in again. I'm like, all right, well, now it's comedic, because uh-huh. wouldn't he just turn it on? Okay, whatever. So then the bug machine attacks. And then we get an all a full-on cyborg shooting at them. It's like one of the Russian guys. It's actually, what's her face? Is Nadia's husband, yes. you find out. So this is actually a guy in like prosthetics and stuff, and that doesn't look too bad. Uh, the bug, the bug machine, it's a cool design, but it doesn't look that cool. It's kind of moved. All right, so this is gonna be my complaint with the robots in this, and it's gonna mm-hmm. sound like a weird complaint, but they move too robotically, and I know that sounds weird. They're not moving like a scary mo- robot in a movie would mm-hmm. move, like the Terminator or something. Right. The robots in this movie, they move like. The animatronics at your local haunted hayride, like they, they are all too stiff. And what it like? Were you? Did these feel like a threat at any point? No. I thought they were scary. I mean, I, I thought they were gross in a way that 
I was like, oh, that's definitely not human. Yeah, that movement. yeah but I'm just yeah. like, I, so in Terminator, it's a machine that's dressed as a man. Yes. And then this, this is a man. A yeah. machine they, dressed as a man. <laughs> but they make the man Mixed a machine because they have humans, a brain yeah. and everything. That's so why it's, it's a like cyborg. So, oof. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like throughout the whole movie, like all the robots, they're just, they feel like, they just not, it's not threatening. It feels like I'm on the haunted hayride at Shady Brook Farm or whatever. <laughs> And, I'm, and, like, the little ghost comes out. He's like, oh, I'm going to get you. That's what this whole movie feels like. Until the CGI one at the end, but we'll get there. Oof. So they get to the engine room, but it's welded shut. Uh, and then another cyborg attacks again. Uh, I like that the captain is dying to kill Nadia because they can't bring the boat in if there's a surviving member mm. on it. Well, they can't claim salvage. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If there's... If there's- any crew on board when you get there. No, you can't claim salvage. That'd be super messed up. Mm. Except if you are rescuing a vessel, you are allowed to bill them after oh. the fact for towing and salvage operations oh, okay. if they were completely disabled. The beginning of Aliens makes more sense now when they're like, there goes our salvage because they find Ripley and they're like, ah, oh, fuck. <sighs> Yeah. Which, again, if I was one of those guys, I'd be like, oh, no, it was yeah. empty. Oh, wasn't that crazy? <laughs> it's really hard to build, though, after the fact. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. It can be done. Okay. But you're also obligated to render assistance to any other vessel in, okay. in trouble, which is why they put all these other rules in place. Like, you can claim some amount of grief money for okay. your efforts. That's cool, then. Yeah. That makes sense then. Um, so yeah, they bring the cyborg up to the uh, bridge. Uh, the girl is giving um, some info on like what happened to the crew because it, clearly it's like a robot dude. Uh, and she says she says that the uh, robots, the the virus or whatever, use the Halon system to kill all the crew. So this movie understands how Halon works, whereas Speed 2 Cruise Control, Willem Dafoe, turns on the Halon thing and blasts him in the face. And he's like, I'm fine. When really you would be very dead. Oh, God. He would have been, he would have been instantly dead. Instantly. Oh, God. Remember Terminator 2? Yes. When Arnold goes in and grabs the gas mask for everyone? When they go into the, like the Cyberdyne building? Oh, yeah, yes. Yes. That's Halon. It's oh, meant okay. to stop fires, but it's like what you said. It's like it highly... literally displaces oxygen yeah. uh-huh. in a way that <laughs> rips it from your body. Oh so God. in that movie, that's why Arnold gives them the oxygen yes. mask before they go into the room. And then in this movie, they said that's what killed everyone. But in Speed 2 Cruise Control, Willem Dafoe would just have it blasted <laughs> in his face. And he and he goes around all fine, even though he would be instant. <laughs> You said, they don't e- with that. you said they don't even use that anymore, right? They don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are systems that are still grandfathered in just because they're old enough. And yeah. It's very expensive and dangerous to get rid of it. Ah, so you God. might as well just maintain it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is weird. Like, the cyborg is built, but then, like, because they want to kind of rip off the thing, it can also, like, change. So, like, they throw the dead guy on the ground. Mm-hmm. And then it turns into like a different, like a snake cyborg that comes out of him. I thought that right. was kind of cool. I did. Yeah, that yeah. Okay, that was the first time I went, ah! Oh! <laughs> I think I like this one because it does kind of resemble these where it is a bunch of flesh where all the other ones are just little, like, I don't know, you piece them together or whatever. So they shoot this thing like twice. Uh, this is when they rip open the brain. They find out that like the robot cool. like puts a thing in your brain. Uh, they find Squeaky. Squeaky finds them. Yeah. <laughs> Squeaky finds them. Steve? Yeah, Steve. Oh, That's God. All he oh, he says. Steve? So he looks really <laughs> cool him. at first when it's like a makeup effects. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, I'm here to get you now. And by the way, I think he lifts up Woods and then a bigger robot comes to punch a hole through Woods. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that was cool and gross. And <laughs> so unnecessary. I was gasping at the gym because I was watching this like on the treadmill. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to be a I tried moments. to be a gym movie guy. Uh but I, t- I told it in the wrap up episode. I tried to watch that uh a good person movie with Florence Pugh. Oh, was there like sex scenes? No, I thought oh. there was going to be, but like I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> And then the guy starts, like, biting Florence's butt. I'm like, ah! <laughs> brightness down. Uh, 
So I might yeah, have to... you have like I remember to... I watched Predator Two <laughs> at the gym and oh, there's yeah, the a whole scene. love making scene. It's just full frontal. Nudity. Yeah, hands <laughs> it turned out. <laughs> Kit does a mutiny because the captain breaks all the radios and prevents them from getting help because he's an asshole. I don't know why they don't just kill him. He's a joke. Like, like I would have just killed him, right? He was this close to killing himself. He really was. <laughs> Touche. Just throw, yeah. throw him overboard. So here, uh, they finally, they're like, wait, we have a computer. Let's hack into the ma mainframe. Hack. Which, by the way, I think there is a montage of every movie that talks about hacking into the mainframe. Oh, There's please send me that. <laughs> I'll send it to you. I think it's That's thing, awesome. I think, like, GoldenEye is in there. There's a bunch of movies. Like, <laughs> we got to get into the mainframe computer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, apparently you could just AOL instant message the alien. Yeah. They just they pull it up and they're like, hi. Wait, it's not an alien. It's an alien entity that went into the robot. The oh, entity right. is alien in nature. It's from outer space. Mm -hmm. Not all aliens look like that or little green men. Some of them are just beams of electricity. <laughs> That's true. I saw nope. Crystalline yes. entities. <laughs> or crystalline entity. You know a lot about Star Trek, I'm realizing. Like me and Picard are soulmates. Uh, you're next gen? Oh my God, yes. Nah, I'm original series. You're gross. <laughs> I mean, both of our series got ruined years later. Honestly, so. no, I do love original Kirk uh, as well. Kirk fell off a rickety bridge and Picard is like a robot now? I don't know what the fine I'm watching. Anyway, anyway, back to this, back to this. Casey, do you want to chime in on Star Trek? Is this still Star Trek? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> It's okay. We got on the discussion of aliens that look <laughs> unconventional. In Star Trek, there's a lot of energy beings. Anyway. So yeah, they're typing and uh, the robot is like, which is the name of the tie-in <laughs> video game, Virus. It is aware. Ooh, what? There's a game? There is a game. I want to play it. Oh, my God. Do you want to play it? Yeah. Good. Can you get me a uh, PAL version <laughs> of a PlayStation 1? Because this won't play in my American PlayStation. Get me things. Do it. I will play this game. Because I literally was going to go pop this in, and I forgot. I'm like, oh, it's, oh. it's the European version. I can't play it. I I have to know someone. I should help Mike Bate. Mike Bate might have a pal one. I have to ask him. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to play for this game for this review because I do that show where I review the games, and I'm like, oh fuck, I can't play it. Apparently, from what I googled, it has very little to do with the movie. <laughs> well, that was a thought I had during while watching this movie. I was like, this would be a great video game. That's obviously like. This glowing bit over there is yeah. clearly a thing, and that uh, over there, you gotta move the bombs from here to there, and you gotta turn this valve and open this. Yeah. Apparently, it plays like Resident Evil and Tomb Raider, like old school Resident Evil awesome. and Tomb Raider, but I'll find out one day. I'll find out one day. They're talking to them, to the entity, and it's basically like, uh, you are a virus, and we want to eliminate you and use your body for parts. So it basically just wants to take over the world. Uh, and just get rid of human beings because it thinks that they're inferior, mm -hmm. which I get it. It's a space traveling beam of electricity. It probably is. Probably, I, I would also have a big uh, ego if I was just a beam of electricity that flew through space. Um, but then <laughs> Squeaky comes back in. Okay, the makeup effects Squeaky looked pretty good. Now we have the animatronic puppet on all fours like, Stevie and I like Steve. I laugh so hard because it's like again again it doesn't look like a Terminator 2 animatronic no. or a Jurassic Park animatronic this looks like your local haunted house animatronic he's like ah uh, and they just like shoot the shit out of him. I really like that Steve I like the fakeness I guess I love that it looks fake <laughs> I mean, you're allowed to like it. That's fine. I've, I like that movie with the cat that I throws that up another cat, cat. I really think he could have been in this movie. That cat. <laughs> he probably could have been. Oh, a little animatronic cat. I don't think uh. there would have been any question as to why that was there, too. <laughs> the storm cleared. Where are we? Oh, we're near the Cayman Islands. Is that a cat? <laughs> I mean, they had a bunch of labs on board. Why wouldn't they have lab animals? <laughs> says, Don't open the cat room. Yeah. <laughs> it's Again, patreon.com slash hack the movies. <laughs> Uninvited. They all leave the captain. <laughs> they all leave the captain. They're like, fuck you. Get out of here. And then the captain suddenly knows how to use AOL instant messenger. He's like, hello, alien? 
It's like, I am the dominant life form. And they're like, hey, can you meet us at <laughs> deck B4 or whatever? So, like, the, I guess it's smart enough to know, that, like, this guy wants to betray all of them. We should team up with him. So I do like that the aliens moved the mainframe because they go to it. They're like, it's turned off and it's just gone. Uh, they just picked it up and took it somewhere. Okay, so the captain goes down to the robot factory. And this cracked me up. They made a robot specifically to be a doorman for the robot factory. It's literally just a robot outside. Like, it's a club. A bouncer. Yeah, he's the bouncer. I did like that part. And then the captain's like, hi, I'm... I'm the dominant life form. I'm the dominant life form, Everton. I was supposed to meet someone. And he's like, you can go in. I'm like, what the fuck? Are they going to party or something? <laughs> I would have mutinied against that captain for his accent alone. <laughs> oh, he's... Ugh. Um, <laughs> uh, I do like when he walks in and he sees a body without a head. And he's like, huh, it's missing a head. I'm like, oh, no, we know what's going to happen to that guy. But yeah, he's trying to work out a deal with like... I've seen movies where the bad guy wants to make a deal with a different bad guy. But it's like, dude, it's a beam of electricity from space that wants to like mix humans with metal like it's not going to help you get money like what the fuck are you expecting he's like I can get you into port if you help me with this 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 and this and it's like no they're just going to kill you you idiot mm -hmm. and use your brain for whatever knowledge you have so everyone's looking for a way out and Richie is now on his own mission he's going to build like missiles and shit like I did, I don't know where this comes from. Where he suddenly is like he's he should have been the ship's engineer the whole time, and why he wasn't is beyond me. I have no idea. Actually, he. I wish the movie followed him. He's the most interesting out of these survivors. He was. I agree. In the last half of the film, he is more interesting than everyone yeah. else. Yes. He's just like fuck all of you. I'm gonna make this missile. And we're gonna tank this thing. And they're like, we just want to leave. It's like no, we gotta stop them. He's the only one who actually cares about humanity. I think <sighs> they get to the top. And uh, Kit almost falls off the ship. But luckily, Hiko grabs her. And then he falls off the ship. Yes. R.I.P. Hiko. Uh, and he gets you taken out to yet. sea. Huh? You don't know that yet. Well, he fell. Well, he I gets taken out to sea. We know that. He gets but taken he out to made, sea. He made it to another part of the ship, mm -hmm. was the line. He uh, When he's out in the ocean, he passes by Clue Gulger. <laughs> they, play, they wave at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and he just wants to build a school. He just wants to build that school. That's all he wants to do with his money. I forgot we. I forgot they were saying what they were going to do with it. And that was right. his noble one. <laughs> um, and then I have a line here. What the fuck is Richie wearing? I like the fake out where it's all a silhouette and you think you're looking at a robot, but then it's just Richie with weird goggles on. He's just making. He's just like putting missiles and warheads together. <laughs> so they're coming up with a plan. I, I guess to crash the boat or something. I forget what their plan is to get out of there. The Russian lady said the only way to sink the boat is to fill it full, is to flood the fuel tanks into the build and then ignite that. Oh. <sighs> Do you have problems with this plan? <laughs> what would have been your plan to get out of this? <laughs> so Chekhov's thermite <laughs> bombs. <laughs> like, <Right>. why? <laughs> like... <laughs> Why oh. aren't we talking about the thermite hand grenades that they have, which is insane that they have them. Yeah, the they really place. think they could have just stopped this a lot sooner. They have the <laughs> RPGs. And, anyway, their plan gets interrupted because the captain shows up. <laughs> Apparently, from what I'm reading, I think Donald Sutherland like got in the makeup once and made them shoot everything because he didn't want to do it again. <sighs> So I think he was in the makeup for a while because he's like, I'm not doing it. Because it is annoying having all that. It was a lot. Especially what he had on because it was a full body prosthetic. He had the, the yeah. scars and he, I love that they gave him a little heart tattoo right here. Uh, did he have a star? Or he was have, it here? Yeah. He, he had, had like something. a star tattoo. Yeah. Like that red star. You're right. It was a star. Yeah, because I, I think it was like one of the Russians' bodies that they just put his head on. And I like that he's still wearing the hat. <laughs> Let him keep the robots. Let him keep the captain. Do you think he knew, like, was he going to them to become that? Or he he was going to die? No, he wanted to make a deal with him, but they just, they just. Not turned... to become that, though. No, he didn't okay. want to become that. Like, obviously, they were going to be like, no, we'll just take your brain and know everything. We're yeah. going to make you into a robot. I don't think he thought that through. He yeah. does have some of his conscience, though. 
because he, he does want revenge on these assholes uh, for screwing him over. I don't know what his plan was after this, because it's not like he... Could you imagine that guy, like, driving the ship into the pier? Like, hey, I found a military vessel. Could you give me money, please? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God, we got to kill that thing. <laughs> they kill him pretty easily, I think. Mm-hmm. They, like, knock... What, did they, like, knock him down, like, a shaft or something? In the book, it was kind of cool because they put him away in like a sick bay. Uh, and then you find out that he like he killed the other girl and she's being turned in the machine. And then he walks into like the bridge, but he's facing them. So they don't know that he has all these cords coming out of his back <sighs> until one person notices it. And again, that happens like in like the very beginning of the book. And here oh. they they move that moment to the end, but it's not as cool of a reveal. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. here he's tits out and he looks like Frankenstein <laughs> with the captain hat. Yeah. Um, tits out. <laughs> it's great. I, I like Richie bumps into them and even though he's seen like a million cyborgs, he thinks they might be cyborgs. It's like, no, they're obviously, they're not there yet. They're obviously not there yet. They're clearly human. Mm-hmm. And again, at this, I feel like they're trying to rip off the thing where they're like, who can we trust? And it's like, one, it's too late to do that in this movie. Two, this isn't like the thing. They can't mimic humans perfectly. They're turning they're literally turning them into robot people. And then a giant CGI robot shows up. Because it was the late 90s and you had to do it. And it it does kind of like the weird texture on it does remind me of the Sentinels in the Matrix, the Squid Guys. Although there it looked a little bit better than it does here. This is the final boss, this giant one. Which, funny enough, in the book, sorry to keep bringing it up. Uh, where is it? Oh, God. The final boss is a, there was like a aircraft on the boat that they were going to go to to oh. get off. But then all the robots were on it. So this is like their, like their aircraft. I think it was a helicopter or something that turned into a big thing. I don't know what the fuck this thing is in the movie, but it doesn't look real at all. No. Uh, and it's chasing them around. What was the dead body pit? That threw me off. Kit falls into like this shallow thing of water with all oh. the dead Russians. And I I thought the point was... I could not tell you. This is the <laughs> point at which I I was like, everything's dark and blinky. That and was, I looked up uh, like reviews from back then. That was a complaint that the movie is too dark. Too dark. Toward mm-hmm. the end. Yeah. Um, it didn't bother me too much. I started cleaning my house. <laughs> Like I was like, it's uh, not Alien vs. Predator Requiem dark or a modern streaming movie dark. Did you watch Five Nights at Freddy's? I did. Did you watch it at home? Yes. Were you able to see it? Some of it was darker than. I yeah. had to like adjust the settings on my. I hate the streaming right now. Like sometimes the movies are way too dark. Depending on what service you're using, what TV, it drives me freaking nuts. But AVP2, worst. Worst that ever. Is, uh, just in general. Look, if you watch Alien vs. Predator, you can skip the second one. It's yeah. it's literally unwatchable. It'll you can't see half the movie. Is that the one with the boat? <laughs> no. Okay. No, sorry. That's the one in Colorado. They fight in a fishing game store. <laughs> Did you ever want to see the Alien and Predator fight in a fishing game store? <laughs> Are they throwing tackle at each other? No, that would have been funny. That actually would have been pretty interesting. <laughs> Well, that would have been awesome if the Predator couldn't use his weapons, so he Worms. used, like, crossbows yeah. and, like, modern... That would have been cool. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, oh, so, they, yeah, they planet charges to blow up the thing. And I like that the robot, like, corners Kit, and then it has the detonator, and it's talking to her, like, politely, and they're like, do you know where this is? The detonator. Where is it? I don't know much about ships. But uh, Richie goes to save her. I think Steve comes in shooting it. And then Richie shoots the rocket propelled grenade launcher inside a ship. I feel like that. I feel like they would all be dead, right? I mean, at the very least, very deaf. <laughs> yes, very deaf. But like, <laughs> deaf. by the way, like, it's not like she ran away from it. Like, no. it like knocked her down and then they hit her with a grenade. I'm like, oh, they would all be dead. Yes. Like. Yes. The walls and stuff would like amplify the blend. Like they'd all be, th- this would be the end of the movie. <laughs> I w- Again, I would not be firing that thing indoors. <laughs> but it's a movie. 
I'm okay with it. I guess. I'm actually, I'm totally okay with that part. That that part's fine. That part was fine. 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 It's ridiculous already. <laughs> yeah, I guess if fine. when you're at this point in the movie, you've already I'm like, given oh, up. I can actually see something. Great. <laughs> Captain Boomy Keep stamp on. of approval. <laughs> Fire away. Um, <laughs> Boom. <laughs> uh, which we we'll call it. Nadia doesn't want to leave until she knows someone is dead. She's like, I forget what her whole thing I was. I remember her. <laughs> her <laughs> yeah. and- her ending. Her ending. No. Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. Her the mo- just before her ending, <laughs> they get into their <laughs> their survival suits. Oh right. I forgot they put the suits on. <laughs> yeah. What was the point of the suits? Like Okay, so those are those are called survival suits, immersion suits, um, gumby suits. Okay. Are the, are the names that people like me would use okay. to describe them and they're not fitted <laughs> like, they're designed for like 300 pound men <laughs> to get into and they they literally call them gumby suits because they have these big red mitten hands they're designed so that you can jump off of a ship land in freezing cold water and oh. be covered up to here with a like spongy thing all over your body okay. so wow. that you can survive in cold water. Okay. They're baggy as hell. <laughs> like, they're that's not, not sexy. That's like, not very sexy, though. Like, like I'm going to have to send you pictures of this. It's, <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Um, so ridiculous. And, and more importantly, yeah. of the people that should know about an immersion suit, it should have been Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Or her character. I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis in real life. Yes, her character. Jamie Lee Curtis in real life was trying to get the director fired. Not the science lady. It should have been Jamie Lee Curtis that's like, we should put on immersion suits. Um, I have it here. The robot destroys the detonator and gets all sassy. I forget how it got sassy. I have to look at the clips. I think it gets like real cocky about it or something. Checkmate. Well, yeah, it asks Um, if there's any more of them. Yeah, like, Nadia kills herself. To, uh, to, she sacrifices herself to try to kill the big one. Mm-hmm. And by Kit time, the big one lives, obviously. Uh, and Kit reunites with Steve, who somehow survived the grenade blast from earlier. He just got up and's like, oh, I'm fine. But Nadia's puppet was probably the worst for me. That's when it was really like, that oh, looks yeah. fake. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. I forgot Richie like died at some yes, point. And yes, and Steve's face during that was just like, he's like, oh. Yeah, he oh, got yeah. like impaled on something. Yep. I know. How did those he two how did those two like he Stevie's injured, Richie dies, and Jamie Lee Curtis, who was like right next to the blast, is like, oh I'm fine. Let me get my <sighs> suit, my inaccurate suit on. Uh <laughs> so this the CGI robot is in there now. It's trying to kill them. And then they find like the torpedo or whatever. And they come up with a plan. They're like, we'll attach this thing to this. Or Richie. Yo, Richie set it up. He, he rigged the whole thing for them to be shot out into the ocean. Well, it was built for one. But it was only built for one. Anyway, so this thing's attach, attacking them. Uh, Baldwin throws Jamie Lee <laughs> Curtis into the thing. And then she's like, no, you're coming with me. And she, like, wraps her legs around him like a spider. <laughs> They go flying. And they, 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 it's the torpedo ride of friendship. Not to wow. be confused with Alien vs. Predator's sleigh ride of friendship. Yes. Spoiler alert. Sorry. That, but not, I can't the, beat that. The human and the predator, who looks terrible, by the way, they have to escape the underground <laughs> thing. So they, they jump onto a sled that's hooked up to a cable and they shoot out to uh, escape an explosion. Much like this movie. They honestly, AVP might have been ripping off parts of this movie. <laughs> a bunch of characters. They made it better. <laughs> a bunch of characters you don't care about. Uh, they <laughs> save the big one for the end. There's a rocker propelled to escape device. <laughs> yeah, so they shoot into the water and then uh, the ship just uh, explodes. Mm-hmm. And that kills the robots, I guess. Well, the sled was attached to a a device. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He had it like roped off so it would shoot them out. I, I feel like they that also would have just killed them. Uh, <laughs> that didn't. Yeah, look- I mean, the ride alone, being shot by a rocket. Off, yeah. Like, just holding <laughs> on real tight. Come It'll on. just take you. It would have just the- ripped your arms off. <laughs> 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 Forget the rest. What if you like face down while it was still going in the water? You'd have been like shredded. 
<laughs> so much wrong with it. So much wrong with it. Like, yeah, the impact when they hit the water again yeah. would have eviscerated them. It's just fun. The explosion is good. I will say the miniature stuff, maybe that's what John Bruno was really good at. Not so much the CGI yeah. or the animatronic stuff. But like, even oh, yeah, at the, the miniature is good. The miniature is good. Like the explosion at the end was really good. But even like the beginning, even though it was inaccurate, <laughs> with like the cable breaking and the barge sinking, I thought those were really good miniatures. I thought those held up pretty well. Uh, but a rescue team is by them. And they're like, oh, look, we found some people. Or no, we found like an explosion. I don't even think they find them. That's a big flare. Yeah. Is what they said. <laughs> not like, oh my God, I hope everyone's yeah. okay. <laughs> or, oh my God, I hope that's not oh, like yeah. a nuclear vessel. Are we all going to die now? <laughs> so yeah, there's there's this weird fake out. It actually, have you ever seen Event Horizon? No. Directed I'm, by the guy who did yeah. ADP. Have you seen Event Horizon? When I was very young and I hated it. Event Horizon I also. Saw it in theaters. Event Horizon could be a good movie. It actually would be Paul W. S. Anderson's best movie if they didn't lose all the footage. It's they on made my him. List. It scared the heck out of me yeah. as a kid. That movie is almost perfect. They literally made him delete like a bunch of not just gore but like character moments, and then they didn't store the film properly. And it was like before DVD was super popular, so the film's just gone forever. Uh, but it has this dumb ending where like. This is basically the same exact ending as this, where she thinks she finds Hiko and it's a fake out. He's a monster. But then it turns out it was just a dream. And Event Horizon does the same thing where it's like, oh, no, the killer's still alive. And it's like, oh, wait, it was just a dream. Like, no, just end it on the jump scare. Why did you do this whole jump? Yeah, that would have been really yeah, cool. Yeah, both movies do that. I'm like, this isn't. This isn't as cool. Like the jump scare is where he ended. It's a. It's supposed to be a horror movie. It doesn't have to have a good ending. Yeah. A happy if you ending. do a sequel. You know, I know yeah. what I know what he did last summer. Jump scare at the end, it ends. I still know what he did last summer. They go, oh, that was a dream. Do tell us it was a dream in the second one. Yeah. The first one ended on that jump scare. Yeah, and that's the end of virus. So would you call it viruses for a second <laughs> one? Like twisters? They should. Well, they're never gonna make a second one to this. I know. Here's the thing. I feel like this is a concept that could work. I feel like they need to try it again. AVP. Would, <laughs> no, not AVP. <laughs> would you be down to see a remake of this? Yes. Uh, this would be a good... This is the example of something you should try to remake, mm -hmm. where it's like, well, that original wasn't great. No one's going to be upset about you ruining it. I'm sure the writer wants a better version of this. Um, I, yeah, I had fun. Do you think she would sign it? If you brought this to Jamie Lee Curtis, would she sign it? <laughs> would she autograph it? Well, no, apparently she likes making fun of this movie. She mentioned in an interview... Uh, she's like, the reason you do these movies is so when people are telling stories of what their worst movie is, you could be like, I've got the worst one. And then she said, like, I don't know, Rob Reiner or someone, they were doing like a bad movie night. She's like, well, I'm bringing virus. <laughs> That's so cool. And by the way, so this is like 1999. Yeah. And I was like, surely, I mean, we all know that I'm the number one res tard and Howling Resurrection is the best. But a lot of people consider that movie bad. And I'm like, I know she doesn't like that movie. I'm like, surely now virus is in her worst movie. It's probably that. Or maybe Beverly Hills Chihuahua. I don't know. I've never actually seen it. But nope. In the, what you call it, in October, I was listening to the Halloween H2O commentary track. And then she just brought up virus and about how much she hated it. So like even to, the, and that commentary track was only from a few years ago. Like even to this day, she's not a fan of this movie. It must have been a horrible experience. It really must have been because she like her, it shows in her performance. She does nothing memorable in this. Mm -hmm. She is a bit of a crybaby, which again, this era of Jamie Lee Curtis that didn't really feel accurate. Um, yeah, apparently it's her worst movie. I don't know. I haven't seen all her movies. There's no character anything. There's nobody has any development. Nobody has an arc. Uh, nobody... Honestly, except for Richie, and he's not the yeah, main character. True. Well, and even then, his arc is just oh we didn't know this about him pretty much he just like, happens to he be he just happens to be way more valuable and none yeah. of us knew about it and we don't really know why other than maybe he was military friends with that other guy and that's why he knows what kind of missiles those are mm. uh, but no, nobody else had had an arc at all he's the only interesting character the captain should have been the main bad guy at the end. Yeah. He they should have like put his face on the big one. It would have right. looked stupid, but at least cuz like you right. hate him most of the movie. And then have Jamie Lee Curtis overcome her wimpiness exactly. to like kick his butt. Exactly, cuz that's like the whole thing where like 
He's kind of the bad guy for most of it. And then the entity is like just the idea of this like soulless blank being is scary, but like it's not as interesting. It's like, oh no, he should have mixed with the virus thing. Been yeah. the big monster at the end would have been more satisfying. Instead, he's like, I'm a robot now, and they kill him right away. And I'm like, well, that's not interesting at all. Yeah, I didn't care about a single person on that boat. Yeah. Other than uh, Hik- Hika. Yeah, Hiko. Hiko. Who is and canonically then, dead, because he, I don't think he shows up after the dream sequence. No. Well, but even then, they didn't, they just made him look extremely injured. They didn't even make him look like he'd been roboted. Wow. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he just looks like a zombie at the end. It was weird. He was, so? yeah, he didn't look alive. He, was he wasn't alive. Uh, he wasn't robot. a zombie. He was just extremely injured and dead. Yeah, that yeah. was weird. Um, and then, like, I think the monster at the end just looks at the explosion as it blows up in his face, which at this point had already been done by Roland Emmerich twice once in Stargate and in uh, Independence Day. Roland Emmerich ripped off himself. Uh, but you know, speaking of AVP, Casey. How they kill the big thing in the comic. Uh, they mm-hmm. sink the boat, but it's still like connected to the boat. So they uh, mm-hmm. they hook it up to like an anchor or something, and they sink the big one to the bottom of the ocean, much like they sink the queen alien at the end yeah. of AVP. <laughs> Paul W. Sanderson must have read this and watched this movie. It's now I, I didn't think about it at all. Now you really open up the thing. I'm like, I feel like he stole a lot from these comics. Taking inspiration. What you gotta um, do. But that was virus. Uh, upon rewatching it, I learned why I don't rewatch this. Mm-hmm. It's it's a good idea. Again, I like thing ripoffs. L- Leviathan did it much better. I would definitely check out Leviathan. Leviathan's cool. Um, it's an interesting concept concept of uh, machines mixing with humanity and being self aware and stuff. But the characters are bland for the most part, like you said. The effects look like your local haunted house they don't look interesting at all what was your main takeaway from this one uh what a terrible accent donald sutherland had. <laughs> just atrocious casey it's your favorite movie you love it i thought i found gold <laughs> i was like wow like i haven't seen a movie like this in a while yeah and I'm not a huge fan of action or sci-fi mm. movies. No. So this just had the same essence of those like Predator, Alien, yeah. <laughs> EVP for the, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. um, so well, I had a lot th- of fun with this it. This is why I thought you would like, it does have a very Aliens feel and to 90s, it. A 90s like yeah. feel. I get it. I get the, the survivor thing. Nostalgia yeah. sort okay. of thing. Yeah. I could, I could be into that in the right okay. circumstances. Ooh. A lot of alcohol. Oh, Captain Boomy's approval. Uh, I forgot yeah. to write, but let's see what director John Bruno has done <laughs> since then. Hold on. Loving these cup holders, by the way. How fun. Oh, you, you need a koozie. Name. I've got extras. Ooh, yes. Don't you worry. Ooh. I'll hook you up. <laughs> oh, so good news. John Bruno did continue working with uh, James Cameron. He did visual effects stuff on Avatar, the first Avatar. Wow, good for him. Uh, I hate the new IMDb. I hate the new IMDb so much. Okay. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, so after Virus, he did two episodes of Star Trek Voyager. And then a movie called Deep Sea Challenge. Ooh. That sounds familiar. Uh, yeah. James Cameron plays himself in it. Uh, <laughs> oh, is it for the Titanic? As a boy, da- filmmaker oh, okay. James Cameron dreamed of a journey to the deepest part of the ocean. This film is a dramatic fulfillment of that dream. That's what I meant. I didn't mean like <laughs> Titanic, by the way. <laughs> like when he went to go see the Titanic. Yeah, in 2014. So, yeah. And then he directed one segment of the original heavy metal animated movie. So there you go. Turns out uh, this this was the end of his theatrical career, I guess. Although I guess he came back with Deep Sea Challenge. But I think that was like a not like even like a real movie that was in anything. Uh, But yeah, I'd say check it out. Uh, A bunch of my friends are getting into indie comics recently. Mm -hmm. My friend Vito is writing a comic. Mint and Riley are. Really, they're backing uh, independent comics to spite another independent comic. Uh, it's a whole story. Oh, man, that's a great character arc. <laughs> that, that is. <laughs> Riley and Mint's character arc is pretty great with that. Whoa. I've written a comic. You did? Mm-hmm. What the? That's so exciting. Yeah. Where, where is this? Where is your independent comic? And like how on do you my get it? computer. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, let's, let's try to get it published. <laughs> 
Um, but no, it's interesting to see how like it started off as an indie comic. Yes. Cool. Well, not indie, it was Dark Horse, it's one of the big ones, but still, like this comic book. It was funny how it went from movie script to comic book to movie script and then finally to movie and a video game that we can't play. Uh, I'd say let's try it again. Chuck, give it a third shot. Give it a third shot, Chuck. Write another draft. <laughs> let's call it something else because no one's going to want to see Virus. They're going to think of this movie. And Jamie Lee Curtis is going to talk shit. So let's call it, oh no, Robots on a Boat. And we'll call it that. Uh, I'd watch that. We'll all be in it. We'll all be in it. Who do you want to be in it? I want to be the evil captain. Oh, fuck, that was my... Okay. Ah, no, no way. No. I'm way more evil than you are. Come on. Okay, I'll be squeaky. I'll be Italian squeaky. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be Richie? Nah, he's way too competent of a character for that. Do you want to be Jamie Lee? You've played her once before. I you do. have experience. Yep, I'll take that. That's it. We're remaking Virus. <laughs> Captain Boomies, where can we find you on land at our computers? I am everywhere on the internet as at Captain Boomies. I also have a podcast called the Funny Boat Podcast. So if you have <sighs> any interest in learning anything about nautical nonsense, come check it out. Check it out. And especially if you're a married man who's into boats, that is, Apparently that that's is my Captain demographic. Boomies target demographic, according to one website. <laughs> That was the rudest <laughs> review <laughs> of my stuff I've ever encountered. What's my target? To, actually, my target demographic might also be like married <laughs> older men, to be honest. <laughs> I think same. Casey, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram at Casey the Final Girl. There you go. There you go. Do you sell these, by the way? I do, actually. They're on my website. All right, go to the website. Buy those. Goodbye, everyone. Bon voyage. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talk, talking about tapes.